Hey. Hey, everyone. Hi. Um, okay. Okay. Okay, Lola. Lola is very excited about saying hello. She's missed you, as have I. Um, I hope you're well. It's a beautiful day here in Peabody, Massachusetts. It's Labor Day for most people. They get the day off. So um, since I couldn't make the Saturday night live, um, the deet night, I thought we would just carry over what we had planned for Saturday for today. Since most of us don't have a lot of places to go, um, I understand some people still do work, but... um, but I figured this was a good a time, as good a time as any to um, to do this sort of project. So I hope you can join me. We're, uh, as you can see, we're making paper pumpkins. And this is a really big project. Um, you need some space. Just kind of give you, you need some space to sort of make it. And I actually didn't complete a whole a pumpkin. I have it in stages. There's uh, three different colors in three different stages so that you can kind of see how it's put together. This project is from uh, SVG Cuts, which is a, a paid file. I think it's $5 for this. But <clears throat> if you feel like this is too much for you and you don't want to attempt it, I would encourage you to just stick around because will be a lot of great people on, people asking questions or making small talk and stuff. And, um, shh. Okay, shh, 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 shh. Lola, come over here. All right, calm down. Honey. Shh. Uh, Lola, Lola, come on. Okay, sorry. I'm going to just maybe ignore her, but I hope that they don't get into a fight. Um, okay, so anyway, this is a large paper project, very similar to um, some of the ones we did from Design Space, but this creates a very large paper pumpkin. It is not a lantern, although she does have, the woman that runs SVG Cuts does have a couple of other paper type um, pumpkin projects that could be lanterns and stuff. Um, so there you go. All right. I don't know where she's going, but hi guys. So the boys are here and she's going in the other room, which is fine. Okay. So it's large, as I've said, but it's not impossible and so I want to show you how it goes together um, and show you how um, you just take it like an like you were eating an elephant um, one one bite at a time right um, and so what these pumpkins are consist of are eight there's eight sides to it that are made up with these three pieces, I'm going to show you how those go together. So there's eight of each of these because we're going to have eight exact same pieces that are the ribs of the pumpkin. And then there will be um, eight pieces of the of the top of the pumpkin that is put there put together using these three pieces. Oh, and this these go on the bottom. These go on the bottom, and this goes on the top. So th let's first start with the um, top, the pumpkin top, because I feel like it's easier, and once you get that, you can kind of understand the scope of the project, okay? So when you cut this all out, it, it does take quite a few sheets of paper. I think it's seven sheets of the color, the main color, and then you also have this the, the stump or the, you know, whatever, what do you call that? The nub, <laughs> the nub or the stump, and then there's leaves that go with it. Um, so here's what you have to do to create the um to create the top so you're going to need one each of these pieces of one each of each of these one each of these 
on each of these, okay? And that's going to create this, and we're gonna create eight of these. So the first thing we have to do is fold, fold, fold at all of the fold lines here. And this is actually gonna go with that square bit at the top. And then we take this piece, fold, 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 just like that. And this is going to attach right here at this, at this tab. And you'll see it creates kind of a triangular shape. It's a little, the tip of the shape is cut off, but it's, it's a triangular shape. So you wanna have this square at the top and then these two on the side. So we're just going to whoops, take our glue And you want to avoid using too much glue, as we have always told you. Um, any liquid glue is going to work on this, but I do like to use something that's designed for paper crafts. And that is uh, this stuff. It's called Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. There's another glue that's very popular in the crafting community called Art Institute Glitter Glue. But I really like this one the best because it has uh, different nubs and it dries a little bit differently. Okay, so once you have these two together, then you're going to put some glue on each of these tabs. Like this. So there's quite a few tabs here. And then we're just going to line up that sort of kind of a triangle without the top. I don't know. I'm sure there's a name for that kind of thing. All right, so we're going to make eight of these. So I already have two done. I'll show you that again, but then um, I wanna show you how they go together. And so here is that piece that it, the bigger of the two pieces, there's the square at the top. Fold all of these pieces. And right here at this tab, it connects with no tab right here. So we're going to glue. All right. Just like this. So you're going to make eight of these. And there's enough to make eight of these. And then once all eight are done, I'm gonna show you how we put them together to create the, the, uh, the top. So the top consists of this, the stump, I guess. What do we call this? The handle. <laughs> What do we call this? This is the vine, the edge of the vine. But here are our eight pieces, you see? Those are our eight pieces together. So we are just, again, folding here at all of these fold lines. This here, too. And stem. Thank you, stem. I was calling it a stump, uh, a stem, a pumpkin stem. Thank you. That makes so much more sense. Um, okay, so here we go. Now, I just did it wrong, so I want to just point out, you see what I did wrong? It makes a, a too big of a spot on the bottom. If that happens, you got to turn it around so so that this piece is going to fit without you having to force it. See that? So that's the way it should look, okay? And once we get all eight done, we are simply going to connect them together. So let me show you how we do that. All right, so there's, I think there's four. Okay. So we take these, each one, we're going to lift these tabs like this, and we're gonna put glue on them, just like this. You see how they start to fit, and this is what we're creating. So you'll see it's starting to create that circle because it's on an angle. 
So just keep doing it. It's not going to lie flat. This part is going to be sort of rounded. My goodness, these guys. So glue here on these three tabs and then connect to the next one, okay? We'll do that one more time with our fourth piece glue on these three tabs. We'll come back to this, um, but I wanna get through the whole idea of the pumpkin and then we'll come back and put it all together. But I just wanted to, you to get a feeling for, whoops, for how this is going together. So that is the top. Once you have all eight pieces, it should look like this with a big hole in the middle, okay? Um, and this is how beautiful it looks on the other side. It almost looks like a flower, right? Um, and so what's that for? So this, the, that's for the stem. And this is actually to cover once you get the stem in, this piece. Okay, so here you go. You can see, well, you can't see that you can't see my stem pieces. So let's talk about the stem. The stem is actually probably the hardest part um, to do. It is eight pieces and it is a curved stem. I think this one is much better looking than this one, but I just wanted to let you know that it's a hard piece and it's hard not to get a lot of glue on the pieces so I would suggest maybe um, inking it or sort of rubbing it so that the glue once you're done with it but it's really very quite lifelike right so let me show you how that works so it consists of eight pieces and they're all numbered I have put a pen in here so you can see the numbers so there's one two three four, five, six, seven, eight, or just like that. And just have a look at them. They curve and they're going to curve together. So let's put them together so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, so let's start with the first one. We're going to valley fold the numbered piece. And then we have to just fold all of these tabs. The tabs get small and then there's a teeny tiny tab at the top. Um, so it's, it's actually a little triangular piece. So just fold that in. So there's one and I'll have the second one. I'll fold the tabs on this one as well. Oh, Miss Lola. She's very chatty. Oh, I can, I know what it is. I think it's Owen. He's up already and all right. Cola, cola. <laughs> yep, it is Mr. Owen. Wanna take Lola for a walk? Yeah. I, I haven't to say that word now they all want to go. No, you can take Lola. She really mm -hmm. wants to go. All right, gotta go. Gotta gotta get going. <laughs> okay, so here yeah, is one and two. And Lola. what we're going to do Lola, go with go with Owen. No, I just want to bark under under the table and ruin things. <laughs> Come on. Good, good. All right, I'm going to need you to move real quick. All right, no, I think maybe not. Take the boys out. Take the boys out. All right. All right, you guys, sorry. Okay, shh, shh. Well, you didn't want to come out. <laughs> okay, sorry. Miss Lola is okay all right enough there she goes. There he goes. oh lovely okay sorry for the for the problems guys okay so what i'm doing is i am gluing these tabs each one of the tabs except for that top one and i am just lining them up along the way like this and you'll notice that you have to um, you have to bend the paper a little bit. So see here where I'm doing this? I'm bending the paper a little bit. 
this again, it's the most, of course, <laughs> it's the most difficult part or the most um, frustrating part, I should say, of the project. And so, of course, that's when we have a crazy dog scene. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, so we're going to just keep keep uh, gluing and holding in place these tabs just like this and we're just going to work in order one through eight so here is uh one and two and just let you see what it looks like you see there's one and two and let's get the third one again fold all these tabs she quieted down when she realized she wasn't going on a walk because she wanted to go on a walk, but she was too anxious. Lola reminds me of, um, okay, this is really going to date me, but remember the Marlo Thomas book, Free to Be You and Me? Um, oh my gosh, we loved that as a kid. We had that book, Free to Be You and Me, Marlo Thomas. I think there was even a TV show or a program about it. But there was all these stories in there and there was one story at the end and it was it was about this little girl on a jungle hunt or something and they she kept saying ladies first ladies first and um, so everybody else was saying oh. Okay, let her go. Ladies first, ladies first. And um, she was just annoying people with her ladies first thing. And <laughs> she was a prim and proper little girl and everything. I'm going to have to find that book. But um, then, then they get captured by tigers. And uh, they don't know what they're going to do. And, and uh, so the girl... She says, ladies first, ladies first. And I remember the, the word, the wording they said, and she was, and quite delicious too. So whenever Lola gets all like kind of um, barky like that, I think, ladies first, ladies first. And it just reminds me that she just is a girl and sassy um, and awful noisy. My boys are very quiet generally. So anyway, so you see what we're doing. We're putting all four, um, I'm sorry, all eight of these pieces together. And it is not flat. You see it has a curve to it, just like this. And so you have to sort of work with the way that the, the uh, stem is curved. Once you do that, you will have eight pieces of a stem that you will then glue to the first piece. The eighth, eighth piece goes to the first piece. And once you have that, just like this, so there's my eight pieces. And I didn't do it all together great here, but you know, you guys, will you'll do it better. And then there on the end, you can either leave this open. I do find leaving it open is kind of, um, I don't know, more accurate, but there is also this little tiny uh, piece that you can put on there. Just put a little bit of glue. Oops, come on, glue. Right. It's a girl thing. You're right. It's a sassy girl thing. And uh, she just, mm, and she likes to talk to me. She's like, makes these little mumbly noises. She actually comes and tells me if the water bowl is, is not filled <laughs> or she needs to go out. It's good. She I mean, she tells me that, but she does tend to tell me that at like four in the morning. So, um, so she's got me up every morning very early but she's a good girl. She's well-trained and goes outside, which is good. My boys, if they weren't kept in their little spaces, then they would just go anywhere. And that might be a boy thing. <laughs> that might be a boy thing. So this, I will tell you, this part of the project is difficult. You might want to save it to the very end. Um and put it together with the top 
at the very end. And don't, you know, don't expect a masterpiece, at least not the first time you do it. But once you have it all set, and here are the eight pieces that we put together, remember. We're going to then take and put this through this way. And you will see, because we have those eight pieces, they correspond with the eight pieces on the top. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put some glue on each of these tabs. This side is a little bit off, I think. But anyway, put some glue on each of these tabs and we are then going to sort of work front to back or bottom to top, I suppose, and make sure that those tabs are catching on the back of the inside, or the inside, the inside of the, yeah, back, whatever, the inside, the back. So um, this, again, takes a little bit of patience. There we go. I might have to just kind of continue to move around this. Sort of like this. All right. And of course, not really working too well. I will tell you that I did use um, a thin, thinner, like a medium weight uh, cardstock for this blue, but I used uh, a thick weight cardstock for the black. I actually used Cricut cardstock um, for the black and orange. So this is a little bit harder because the, the paper is a little more floppy. Um, but essentially, this is the way that it's supposed to look. I think actually when Mary did it, she pressed down like this, but I was trying to do it by pressing each of the tabs down. So maybe I should try it this way. Did that work? Yeah, that worked. <laughs> um, okay, and then what we're going to do is take this sort of star piece and put it over here. That will secure the stem and also hide the tabs from the stem. And so we're gonna put glue all over here. Those asking about my friend and my mom, the thing about my mom is it's it's a little frustrating because she, she has a phone, but she doesn't know how to use it. And for some reason, I, she, she cannot get phone calls from me. She probably has me blocked, but doesn't know it. And so I keep trying and trying and trying and my sisters try and they're like, how come you can't get through? And I'm like, I don't know, but we can't go and visit um, her because the, the place that she's at, um, they are on, they're not on lockdown, but they are semi lockdown in the sense that um they're eating all their meals in their room and so she uh she doesn't get a lot of interaction like she was getting for the prior month and she's so she's upset and she doesn't understand the whole issue of a vaccine versus a COVID test. I know that's weird, but she just doesn't understand that. So that's the thing about my mom that's just so frustrating. You can't visit her. I can't visit her, but I, <coughs> hey, shh, but I can't, um, I can't get a hold of her by phone. So I've been communicating with her through my sister. Hey, you, shh. Okay, so that is how the top looks, all right? Okay, so then we're going to move on to the, oh, Lola, Lola. We're gonna move on to the, uh, to the, I don't know, ribs, the ribs, okay? So you're, you're, there's four pieces to this. There's this, which is the main piece, and then you have these, 
these two pieces here. So we've got one piece that has uh, tabs on one side but nothing on the other and one piece that has tabs on both sides okay so what we're going to do and then oh we have this little piece down here and we're going to start with that so we're going to take it with the wide bottom part and with this the smaller of the two tabs we're going to glue this tab now this is the front okay so um, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to glue this little piece on here to create. This is kind of the, going to be the bottom of the pumpkin. Well, all the countries are heard from. I just heard the pigs and Frankie meowing. Okay, so once you have that connected, just notice that there is this tab right here. So you're going to take this piece the piece that only has one tab and then there is this you see this piece that coordinates just like this and we're going to glue that on i do this a little bit like an assembly line i kind of create the the ribs before i go ahead and glue them all up so this is what i do i create like this sort of sprout thing so here's our second one and you notice that there are bigger tabs here the big tab up here is going to go behind there so this is what it's going to look like kind of like a corn stalk um so here we go so there's our major tab right there Just like that okay and press and hold until it connects which just takes a few seconds all right so to do that again there's four pieces here is the rib the actual you know front of the rib and then here's like the bottom piece fold it at the three tabs and we'll glue that bottom piece to the top tab which is smaller than that bottom tab all right just like that and you can do like all this part first and then go to the next part the next part that sort of thing that might be useful uh, way to put these together if you're putting more than one together Okay, so once that's stuck, we're gonna take this one that has only one set of tabs and we're going to attach it here. So it's gonna go in a circle like this, but we're just gonna attach it first here. Just so you can get a feel for how this is going to end up looking. So it's obviously this curve is gonna create the 3D effect of the pumpkin, okay? And then from our double-sided piece, we're going to glue on this tab. And we're gonna do this eight times, okay? So you should, if you do this just step-by-step, step, you'll have eight of these sort of weirdly corn-looking things, okay? So then once you have that, we're going to make sure that we fold all of those um, tabs. You can turn it over, fold all those tabs in just like this. Same on this side, at least on the side that's part of the um, part of the ribbing. I'm going to call it the rib. Yeah, yeah, rib. Okay, so that's the front. There's the back. Now we're going to... Take our glue, holding the back and sort of out with the with the main piece sort of pr this way, going this way, so that you can kind of get into these tabs. We're going to put a little bit of glue. Personally, I like to glue all the tabs first. I tend to make less of a mess when I do it this way um, rather than come back and do halfway, halfway kind of thing. But that's up to you. It's you what works for you okay you notice i'm putting glue on every tab that's important and 
not a lot of glue, just a little bit. Okay, so now I'm holding it from the back and I'm going to start matching the tabs to the side. I'll, I'll turn it over in a second, but just matching the tabs to the inside edge, okay? And just do those bottom ones first, just to catch them. Then you can turn it over like this and you can start holding it. If, if that's useful to you, you can hold it this way. Personally, I like to do it this way and use my fingers to, to uh, guide those tabs in place, just like this, you see? Okay, so um, here's what it looks like on the outside. Now, make sure your edges are really uh, close together. If you don't do that, it will upset the size of the pumpkin. And one way to check is just to kind of look in the back and see if you have any light coming through. Um, and then just sort of ease this piece on there, okay? Now you got one side done. Let's do the other side the same way. I'm on the back where these little ribs are, these little, I'm sorry, tabs are. Okay. There we go. And you can either do it facing the front or in the back, that's up to you. But you want for the tab, the bottom of that tab to be aligned with the side of the rib, okay? Just like this. So we're almost done with our first rib. I'm gonna show you this again in case it's confusing. All right. And take your time with this, okay? And make sure that you get it right because it does affect the end result. When I did the black, I used kind of a lot of glue. A lot of glue can sometimes seep out here. So I'll show you what I did to sort of cover up the glue. Even though it dries clear, like little bits of it were showing and I wanted to sort of hide that with the black. With the other colors, not so much, but all right. And if you have to put a little more glue here because it's you've taken a lot of time, that's okay. Just a little bit though, okay? All right, so this is one rib, almost done. Now I've been making these for years and I still struggle with it. So if this is a project that's just too ambitious for you, that's okay. Um, you can just watch and, and sort of get an idea for it. Um, I didn't try it until I was, oh, I don't know, five or six years into paper crafting. So there you go. Okay, so this is one of the ribs. We're going to make eight of those. And this is what they look like on the inside. This is the smaller See that smaller part, and there's the part that is going to be the bottom, and we're going to connect these once we get them all done. So we're going to keep working. Here is this other one that we did. We're going to turn it over and push in all of these tabs like this. Get them all ready. Put some glue on them. I don't know if it's helpful to work flat or not, but I'll work flat on this one, at least for this part. So 
So the other thing that's kind of bumming me out is that my girlfriend, now you remember the wedding that we went to two weeks ago? That was um, my girlfriend's son who got married. And he's young, 19. I don't think he knew, but um, she was diagnosed. She was in a lot of pain, I guess, at the wedding, which kind of made sense after the fact. She didn't spend a whole lot of time there. And um, so she went to Mass General last Sunday, not this past Sunday, and they kept her in there because they found she had uh, tumors in her groin area, you know, like one on her stomach wall and stuff, and then all kind of through those those areas. And um, I don't know. It's hard because she lives in New Hampshire, and I don't, I'm not trying to diss New Hampshire, but Massachusetts really does have the best um, health you know, care. We just have a lot of schools here. And so what happens is the, um, the students do their internships in, uh, in Boston. They get to love the city and, um, they end up like doing internships at Dana-Farber or Mass General and, um, they love it. And so they stay. So, um, so it really does promote quite a few um, good hospitals with good brand new doctors and stuff. But her doctor in New Hampshire was kind of poo-pooing her when she was saying she was in pain and stuff. And so she kind of didn't, she didn't pressure them to say, you know, I want to get this solved. She just, she just, uh, not ignored it, but just kind of like lived with it. And now it is pretty bad. Um, she said it could have been like growing or one of the tumors could have been growing for like five years. She's a heavy set girl. So maybe they just, you know, I don't know, never checked there. She did go to the doctor's all the time so I don't know what's going on but um, I'm worried because both of her parents died young and she you know she spent her whole life caring for her son and and everything he was everything to her and uh, and now that he's gone I'm I'm hoping that that's not going to take you know the wind out of her sails because she's really a fabulous girl woman and has a lot to give to, you know, others, but she struggles just like a lot of us struggles, right? So who knows, but she was in the hospital for about a week and at Mass General, which is in Boston. And, um, she, they're still waiting because of the Labor Day holiday for like the biopsies to come out and everything. But they did say, that it has gone to a lot of her different organs in her, you know, belly area. So prayers and prayers, prayers on prayers would be wonderful. She is a um, Christian woman and believes that she's in good hands. Uh, but sometimes I just wonder about her. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, her drive, her persistence or something, maybe? Like, I mean, when I had cancer, I was just like, all right, this sucks, but I'm going to make it through. And when I get done, I, I had goals for, like, when I'm done with it, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I had, that was what I sort of pinned my hopes on. And so she... Not so, not so um, like that. Not super motivated, I don't think. I mean, we always sort of, I don't want to say motivated, that's wrong. But um, she always was a little more laid back than I was. 
but I met her in my neighborhood after my father died, and she's like the only one that would talk to me. Well, uh, you know, I wasn't a very outgoing person, um, but I would walk the dogs, and she'd say, hi, you know, my name's Molly, and <laughs> every time I saw her, hi, I'm Molly, what's your name? You know, very, very friendly, and... um Whereas the rest, in, if you live in New England, we're not super social people. Um, we are with the people we know. But if it's with a stranger, we're just not, you know. I am, but I spend a lot of time in the South, so I think that kind of rubbed off on me. But in New England, we're kind of just keep to ourselves. Like, I didn't know certain people in my neighborhood had, you know, issues or somebody died or until like after the fact, you know, and it's like, whoa, really? You know, um, and it's not a nosiness thing, but I think it's perceived as nosiness. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's nosy. I don't know. I just like to know and so I can you know, do something or even just pray, you know, so anyway, yeah, we just keep to ourselves so different than as you, and I have a friend who, um, on the conservation committee, such a great guy. He's originally from Chicago and he said, you know what I think it is? He's, he's been here cause he worked at Gillette and everything. He's been here for several decades now, but he's an older gentleman. I think he's in his seventies. And, um, he said, you know, I think it's a, it's a product of the land or the place that we live in or something because this is so rooted in the past that um we kind of have everything we need or we've already planned I don't know it it's an interesting take on it and and um and he said but as you get farther out on the west coast you know you have to rely on people more versus we rely on ourselves here more than we ask people and I know I'm guilty of that too like if I if I can't do it then I guess I have to ask somebody for help but but um I like to do a lot of the stuff by myself it's just sort of the way that I was brought up but it does make for you know people being alone a lot and especially as they get older I don't think it's necessarily a good thing. Maybe it's not a good thing. I mean, it's good to be self-reliant and everything, but but you do it takes a village as they say. Anyway. All right. So you see what I'm doing? I'm just chit-chatting as I put together these ribs and I'm going to put together eight of them just like I did with the um with the top, okay? And that's what I'm doing. Now, I was thinking a lot over the weekend about what we're gonna do for the rest of the week and stuff. And I would really, I know I promised you fall, so I really wanna do fall, fall, fall. So I started, and Halloween. I know some of you may or may not be Halloween fans. I have to do Halloween only because I live right next to like the Halloween capital of the world, Salem. And actually Peabody was um, one time part of Salem. I was talking to one of the city councilors uh, yesterday and I said, you know, it's kind of funny every year and I've been in Peabody for quite a long time now. Um, when they do this thing, it's called ha Haunted Happenings. It's a month long. It literally starts August 1st, and it's a month long celebration of Halloween. And Salem is just, it's huge. I mean, it's like the number of people, they have maybe about 50,000 people that live in, in Salem. Um, and then there's like, 
I don't know, a ridiculous amount, like hundreds of thousands of people that visit there. And they spend all their tourist money there. And it's a big, you know, it's a big deal. Um, people, some people really like Halloween. And so over the years, I'd say in the, in the last 30 or 40 years, it's become quite the thing. But it's it's weird because um, Danvers or Onion Town, as it's known, um, and Peabody were all part of Salem at one time. And actually, Danvers... Actually, if you put Danvers uh, next to Salem, actually, there's more witch uh, trial stuff there than in Salem. It's very interesting history. And even in Peabody, we have some very famous uh, people that died. Oop. I hear my piggies. I don't know if you can hear them, but they're pig they're weaking. They must want some hay or something. Anyway, so we actually have three um, of the 20 uh, graves that are uh, part of the witch story. And, and, you know, the other thing that's weird is that Salem, this was just a very small part of Salem's history. And Salem is like huge for trade and for development. In fact, it was the birthplace of the National Guard and um, there were pirates. There were like the East India trade. I mean, there was a lot going on in Salem um, before all this happened. So it's like it's been boiled down to one three to six month period and they've got 300 years of history there so it's a little strange so I, I don't know as a as a neighboring city we never know what to do so um this year I decided that we're gonna embrace it because why not and get all spooky but usually I just kind of ignore it and and do do just fall stuff but this year I think maybe some spookier stuff um, so we got to get started on that. And I'm just going to do one more rib so you can kind of see how after we do. So I've done three ribs, you see. I don't know if you can hear those pigs, but they're squeaking like crazy. I don't know why. They don't usually like that. Sometimes they just get all excited. Pigs are like so much fun. They're messy though. They're super messy. But they're fun. They're supposed to be Owens, but of course he doesn't take care of them. I do but I like them. They're funny. And they're cute. They're not like rat looking. Well, they're not really a rat. I think they're kind of a cavy or something. So um, I'm not really keen on rats, but, or hamsters, gerbils. Oh my God, growing up, my sister loved gerbils. And we had this whole gerbil fiasco that happened at my house. It was just crazy uh, because my parents thought, oh, let's save a little money and get a boy and a girl gerbil and what they didn't know was that they needed to uh, mate them and then separate them so we ended up with like dozens of gerbils and they kept escaping I think I might have told you this before but they kept escaping and um, my father having grown up in Somerville um, which is like right next to the city um and of course, in the city, you have mice and rats. So his instinct was, if they got out, they became <laughs> they became a pest. Uh, you know, instead of a pet, they became a pest. And so he was uh, trying to get rid of a lot of these gerbils that they just kept mating and mating. Oh, it was just awful. My my poor parents. They were trying to. I don't know. Trying. 
All right, so here we go. So we're doing the last of this rib, and um, there again, there's eight of them. I hope that we're going to be able to finish up at least the black pumpkin, but because I did all the ribs for the black pumpkin. All right, so now that we are doing this so you know it takes time sit with somebody or sit in front of the tv or or you know chit chat like i'm doing with somebody um so that you don't get terribly bored but it's it's sort of your zen moment i guess uh when you can sit and relax this is it can be relaxing if you allow it to be all right, so that is how you make the ribs. So let's pretend, fast forward, fast forward into this, which are all the ribs. And then once they're all made, you're going to put them together. So the reason why we have uh, one side with and the other side without the tabs is so that we can put them all together. So when you do that, and you turn them this way, you see there's only one set of, um, of tabs. This part is um, different. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's hard, but it is different because you have to kind of really work your hands and get in there, especially if you don't have long fingers because you need to kind of have long fingers. So what we're going to do is we're going to just glue that remaining tab just like this. Like this. All right. I like to put all the glue on there first. You might be different. I don't know. But we're going to take the other part, the one without the the tabs and we're going to match up these bottom pieces first okay hold them they're going to be in a triangular shape like this you see and that's what we want it's like that we want that because we want the bottom to be um an octagon it's going to look like an octagon i promise so make sure you get those together like that. And then just keep working through. You see, I got my fingers in the back trying to get, but I'm, I'm looking on the front. I think this is the easy way to do it, but I'll show you what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get those, those um, tabs connected to the part that has no tabs, just like this. Now I know, I don't know if Shirley's on, but, um, oh yeah, she is on, yeah. Um, so Shirley, who has done these before, and I have done these before, I've actually done videos on these before, maybe, I don't, I don't really recall if they were better than this one <laughs> or worse, but um, I just think it's one of those really wow projects that people really just go, you know, wow. Neighbors, you know, a number of my neighbors. And I've given these away, like to my mom, to my sister. My sister got my second... Uh, scarecrow so I don't think she wants this one but um this is the black one now you might think a black pumpkin but let me show you what I did um the glue see how it's kind of gluey you can see the white of the glue um it does it seems to be doing that with the black only Okay, so here are these two and then these three. And so what I did was I started thinking, you know, this would look good gilded. 
So um, I took my Brilliance Fast Drying Pigment Ink in Galaxy Gold. I, I posted this um, the other day, and there are my, like, I think they're supposed to be makeup brushes, but I'm using them for this, and sort of tap a little bit of that glue, um, not glue, of that coloring on there, and I think... I figured I would do like the seams like this. And this is a perfect brush for the seams. So let's do this one that we just finished. So that you don't have these, like this color. Okay. So I just thought this is kind of perfect and it it's going to look good. And then maybe once I get it all together, I can, um, I can, uh, scatter some some glitter on it too that I think that would be kind of cool so this is just an option now Shirley what I was saying which about Shirley is she decided she wanted to make hers a lantern this year so she actually cut out um like uh what do you call it like a, a like a design on the main portion of the rib and by doing that, she can put an LED light, not a real candle, please, but an LED light in there. So you could do this. I <laughs> I give everything away, too. You're here like me. Um, okay, so let's put this all together. So here is three, two, two, and then one. I didn't do that in any particular for any particular reason. I just kind of wanted to show you this is what they all will look like and you're going to line them all up and glue them together. It gets a little hairy at the end. So don't lose your patience. Patience is a virtue, folks. So yeah, we're going to jump on into fall. Last week we did like kind of organizing. We're going to jump on into fall. And then one of the watchers, one of the the regular watcher sent me a really cool place of a of a young lady. I think her name is Mandy, Miss Mandy. And all of her designs, which are pretty fabulous, um, are, I think, free. And so, which is weird, you know? Like, I don't, I don't know. Maybe she's got a YouTube channel or something. But um, to have everything for free, and they're all, like, 3D. So, we're going to do her channel on Friday. And then I just don't know what we're going to do for... Saturday night but remember Friday night we have that um for product expert uh sort of meet and greet I don't know what you want to call it but it's it's like it's just going to be like inspiration and sort of get to know um us and understand how the product expert program works and what we do for cricket Think, I think a lot of people think we're employees, but we're not. We're just sort of people that are really excited about cricket, and um, and we all have our different things. So the so one of the people is Melody Lane, which a lot of people know. She's the one that's sort of organizing it, and it's going to be on her channel in YouTube. Right, so um, the, if you want to get a reminder, you have to go to YouTube and uh, find Melody Lane's uh, channel and then sign up for the reminder. I'm going to go over how to do that uh, probably tomorrow, okay? And so Melody Lane, and then there's Carol Prevost, who's from Canada, super, super nice lady. And um, she does a lot. She was doing a lot with sewing. I don't know if she still is, but she was doing a lot with sewing. And um, 
and doing quilting that she just learned how to do. It's kind of cool. And let's see, so this Carol in, in Canada, uh, nice lady. And then the, there's me, then there's me. <laughs> um, but you're, you know me, so. Um, and then this, the last person is a girl, a young woman named Abigail, who is um, a Latina, and she does a lot of Spanish-speaking videos. So um, I think she does it under Sassy Renita Crafts. She's about my size, like my size as far as people. Um, so we're going to have a lot of prizes, first of all, and we're going to um, just do some sort of like question and answer and sort of inspiration, meet and greet, all that sort of thing. It'll be fun. No projects. Um, just, I mean, we'll show, I think we're going to show projects, but we're not going to um, put together any projects. So it's just kind of fun. So bring yourself and come and watch and it'll be live. It's going to be live on YouTube. Um, and get to know these other people and see if they, you like their style. Maybe you've never heard of some of one of them or two of them or something. All right. So we're getting down to the almost together mark. You see, I'm putting these two bits together. Um, and then I have that one last rib. And then I'll show you how to actually finish it up. I can get the glue in here. And obviously, I'm, I'm going over the hour because this was supposed to be on Saturday night. So I apologize for the length, but I figure a lot of people have um, time. And so, okay. Today, anyway, they have time today. So I've got seven here to connected. So I got to do the eighth one. And yeah, you got to use both hands on this. You see? And then this last one, you're going to have to glue in two places. So um, be patient with yourself. Oh, thanks, Kristen. You're so sweet. You're my favorite too. I love you guys. This is a great group. I really love it. I like the interaction. I, I, I don't know if I told you this, but I started out like the others where I was recording videos. And I was in the video frame because a lot of people complain, oh, I can't see your face. But I did do ones that you could see me on the video. Um, and that was fine, only... I. I felt like I wanted to just like interact with people and he couldn't really do that. And so after the fact, you spent, well, I spent a lot of time sort of talking or responding to people um, with questions. And it just, I like, I want it to go the way you want it to go. Like, I don't, I don't have an agenda, <laughs> so to speak. I just want it to go sort of the way that you, you know, you want to go. And, um, so if you're not interested in certain things, it, you know, I don't want to do them because why make, you know, projects just because you, you want to do them. I like to make things that everybody wants to do. So, so I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here, but this part is hard. This part is difficult, and I want to make sure that I have it lined up right, first of all. So I'm putting that last piece so you can see why I wanted to um, 
use that gilding because there's an awful lot of glue that gets on here and on black um, it doesn't seem to sort of disappear the way it does on other colors so I'm gonna try to get it in view so I'm trying to do this last ribbing putting it on And I was thinking is that I wish Cricut would design one of these 3D models for an apple because I think this is September's more apple season, at least up here. And I know I'm starting on the pumpkins a bit early, but it'd be nice to have around your house until Thanksgiving even. Okay, so there are the all the pieces you see and now the last piece we're going to have to kind of put our hands in both ways so let's be patient and do that if you can't stick around then um, don't forget that we're going to be on the replay on youtube if all goes well knock on wood um sometimes i have a little problems with getting the video recording um and remember we are still giving away we're still doing the giveaway for the uh cricket cutie it, the lilac one i actually have four i think maybe five cuties that i'm giving away and the whole sole purpose of that is just to increase the subscriber you're just getting your summer? Oh no, it it's definitely feels like fall is coming here. I don't know if it has to do with the sun and the way that it is, but I can feel fall coming. I can feel it coming. It's been colder at night. I haven't really seen any leaves yet turning, but they'll be starting soon. We need to make a banner and I need to make a porch sign. So those are going to be on the on the list of things to do in the next couple of weeks. I also have been exploring some paper Christmas ornaments um, because those were really popular last year when we did the um, remember we did them. They were like an old fashioned craft from when you'd get Christmas cards, lots and lots of Christmas cards, and you'd cut out the circles and make and make a like a bobble. And so I, everybody loved that project. So um, I'm gonna look for something similar but different um, that is a paper ornament. This has to stick on the inside. So I just want to make sure that I'm getting my fingers in there. Almost, almost, fellas, friends. Hold on. Be patient with me if you can. All right. Maybe I should turn it this way. Just sort of pinch on the inside. Oh, high 90s all week, huh? Bye. Bye, Laurie. Oh, what are we talking about? Mystery boxes? Yeah. Um, they. We're not allowed to give you any 
pre as as um product experts we're not allowed to give you any pre-warning on the mystery boxes that might change we used to be able to do that but um but what happened was it got so crazy busy that and people were upset because they wanted to get it and they you know a lot of people at the right at the launch came in and boom took them all so I kind of like that it that way because I want everybody to have the opportunity to have them okay so there is our let's look at the bottom there's our our um our pumpkin. Now, granted, uh, you know, I, I can go back and do a little bit there, or I could try. If you wanted to do glitter, I would um, avoid doing glitter unless you just made this part here glitter, like the ribs. I think that would look kind of cool, but avoid doing glitter like for these things because it will be maddening. You'll drive yourself mad with trying to glue it together, okay? So, Next up is we have to find, well, first of all, here's our top. Cool, right? Then we have to find the bottom pieces, which uh, I hope they're here. Um, and I also want to show you the leaves. Where are my bottom pieces? Come on. Did it go underneath the machine? I well, because I need to show you these bottom pieces, I'm going to just do the orange for the bottom because that that's okay. So, all right, you got two octagons, stop signs, and one is ever so slightly smaller. You can see that. It's so minuscule, the amount. But the, the smaller one is going to go on the inside, and the larger one is going to go on the bottom, okay? So you can do this a couple of ways. You can uh, turn your pumpkin around and put your uh, glue here on these inside tabs. Let's just open these out like this. I think I favor this this way, um, but I'll tell you what the other way is, okay? So we would then just glue on these inside parts of these tabs, you see? And then when we turn them around, they'll be inside of the pumpkin. Also remember, in addition to the Friday, then we also uh, will be having our monthly Zoom call next Saturday, not this coming Saturday, but next Saturday. So we're gonna have fun there. Perhaps there will be some prizes. I know you guys like prizes, I like prizes. Hey, listen, um, also don't forget that scrap, um, scrap challenge that's going on at Cricut and the birthday party project which is still going on so I think some people misunderstood okay so here it is you see the glue on the inside so I'm going to take my smaller of these two and I am going to place it inside and normally I would stand but I can't really do that with the camera but I'm trying to get it so that it is connecting with the bottom tabs that I put all of that glue on. You see like that? Now you might have to finagle it. So that's one way to do it. <laughs> the other way to do it is glue the bigger one to the outside like this. I think I like this one better because I don't have to like reach on in the pumpkin and take our octagon and start it off on one of those tabs 
like this and then start getting all these side pieces on like this. And this will actually straighten out the pumpkin and give it a pumpkin-y shape, this piece. All right. So this is a very advanced project. If you're looking at this and going, gee, Rita, I could never do this. Don't never say never. There are going to be um, opportunities when you get better at this, then um, that you'll be able to do projects like this. But this is a very nice project. It's a great kit and um, it's it you will get better at it as time goes on. Clearly, I mean, I'm not, I have not perfected it because <laughs> look at me, I'm still, I'm still struggling with that bottom piece. But let's say that bottom piece is on, then we're gonna take that inside piece and instead we're gonna put like a lot of glue on it, just like this, especially around the edges and get it down in here and that will enforce or reinforce our bottom of the pumpkin. Okay. Now, I did not do this super correct and I'm using the wrong color, but you guys get the idea and you'll do better, right? And then here is the top. The only piece that's left is this, which is a very spindly kind of, um, kind of a leaf and you can sort of just kind of wrap it around like this or glue it onto, let's do that. Sort of just glue it in tiny pieces, like just on the back of these leaves just to get them attached so they don't fall off. But you can like sort of make these things sort of go anywhere you like. And there you go. Actually, I like the way this black looks with the green, but I think I think I need to go back and do a little bit better job with my black um, gilding. I would love to be able to use, uh, I would love to be able to use uh, gold leaf. I think that would look so cool. I don't know if it would work on paper. Does anybody know? Don't know. All right. And you, you know, if you wanted to, I, I, I thought of this before. You can add raffia or um, if you want to just kind of make this a little more more about the greenery you can cut two of them just be careful because this is very don't like pile them up like I've done because then you could rip it but here you go can take the second one come on now unbelievable <laughs> ah! Let go, let go. Oh, you know what? It's probably telling me don't do that, Rita. But you could put two, I don't know, maybe one. Maybe it was right, one. Because when I think about when we grew pumpkins in our yard, they um, they didn't have that many leaves, but they did have these little stems. So maybe just sort of pull up the stems like this. Anyway, you can see this is a great project for a day like today where you might be home, your house is already clean, and you want to just sort of do some playing. And it is, and it's a, it's really kind of got a wow factor to it. It's a nice gift 
to give or it's just really nice to have your um have on your i don't know your dining room table or your foyer table so cute i don't put the the uh, cover on i don't know i don't glue it on so i don't know if you would do that as well but here you go that is a uh, life-size pumpkin this would be a very this would be a five dollar pumpkin <laughs> when I was kid when we were kids and uh you know the pumpkins like five dollars was the maximum my father said we could spend that was a big pumpkin so we'd get like the one dollar pumpkins and then we'd have one family size five dollar pumpkin anyway we always carved pumpkins so that is how it looks you can fix this on the bottom kind of glad I did it in the different colors so you could see it and uh, that's it so everybody if anybody tries this definitely share um, what you did and I'd love to see say Shirley's been doing some uh, different takes on it so if you have a similar idea or maybe you want to do patterned paper you'd need a lot of pattern paper if you wanted it to match but um you could cut out these ribs in pattern hey that's an idea that's an idea so anyway thank you everyone um there's no way you would try it eh, maybe you say that now but maybe in a few years you would try it <laughs> Um, you've been cutting, I know it does take quite a bit to cut out. It is a seven sheets for the, just for the color, for the main color of the pumpkin. Um, and, and then just one sheet or half sheet of green and then half sheet of the brown for the stem. But it's really a fun project and, um, it's challenging. Yes. It, it's not an easy project, but it's fun, and it's the sort of project that's really fun to do maybe with somebody else or, um, or while you're watching TV or something like that. So um, consider, consider for that. All right, everyone, that's it for me today. I will see you again tomorrow. Thank you again for your patience with me over the weekend. Um, and we'll just keep chugging along because we are persistent, persistent people, right? Life is a very daily thing. <laughs> it's very daily. You have to feed the dogs every day and you have to take a shower. I mean, you know, that sort of thing. It's very daily. Um, but it also has nice rituals to it and that are comforting. So, um, consider that. All right, everyone, have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy your time. And if you have the day off, um, enjoy your time and maybe get some crafting in. All right. Take care. Bye.